see these hacks that i'm about to share with you in this video i wish someone had told me earlier like why did it take me so long hi guys and welcome back or welcome to my youtube channel esp daniela of where i talk about anything and everything related to education tech professional development saving money anything I feel like talking about for that particular day. So for today's video, I will be talking about the top 10, maybe even 15 if I feel like it, college tips and hacks that I wish I knew earlier. And this advice is coming from someone who already graduated from undergrad and I'm currently in grad school. So let's just get into it. So hack number one, you can actually negotiate to have your grade rounded up to the next grade. And I'm not just talking about rounding it up from like an 88 or 89 all the way to a 90. I have been able to round up like 84s, 85s all the way to a 90. So as an example of this, I had a class during my freshman year of college I believe it was like history and I didn't do too well on the final exam and so I was like really upset about that because I thought I was going to do well I studied so much and everything and so I emailed the TA because the teaching assistant was over the grading process as opposed to the professor and I told them how much I studied how I really was wanting an A in this class yada yada and they ended up pushing my grade to the next level however me doing that was actually intentional and I basically already assumed that they were going to do this because I've been doing this for years honestly ever since high school sending an email or booking office hours with a teacher teaching assistant whoever it may be telling them showing them how much of an example student i am and the more familiar they are with you the more they feel that you are trying to do better the more likely they are to push your grade to the next level so consider implementing this strategy is basically reverse psychology in a way um, because it has helped me a lot of times so hack number two you can also negotiate your financial aid package. So if you have applied for like multiple universities and one school is giving you a lot more financial aid and like scholarships, grants, etc., more than the other school that you really want to go to, what you would do would be to communicate to that school that you really want to go to, show them the offer letter coming from that other school and basically say, hey, I really want to go to your school. However, this school is offering me a lot more financial aid than you. And if possible, if you can consider matching their offer, I will enroll in your school. For example, I have a parent who's enrolled in my online scholarship course. And for those who don't know, I've helped a lot of people over the years win millions and millions of dollars in scholarships because I personally was able to win 30 myself. But anywho, this person, this parent in my online course, she was able to negotiate her son's financial aid between UC Berkeley and I believe UCLA and was able to get thousands and thousands of dollars more. And this was also coming from a parent who was in a household that was like higher income because you know it's significantly harder to get financial aid if you're coming from a higher income household but just know that it is still possible and i also have a background of being in a household that has somewhat of a higher upper middle class income so if you are interested make sure to check out my online course you can use this promo code to get it for cheaper and i even have a book if you want to instead go with that route because i have all these other resources that can benefit you for college and graduating debt free like me so the next tip i have for you guys is relating to your textbooks now nine times out of ten from my personal experience i did not need the textbook at all now there would be the occasional time of where i needed the textbook but not the whole textbook meaning i only needed to read one or two chapters so if that's the case what's the point of buying it so if you are in a situation like that i highly recommend to instead first check with your university's library or local library see if they have that textbook available whether that's in person or their digital database so just know that is an option and also related to textbooks if you are trying to choose between getting like an ebook versus a physical book i tend to like to use the ebook especially if it's like a pdf and why because you can use control find that is like the holy grail when it comes to college or anything else when you're trying to be more productive and spend less time doing that particular task all you have to do is automatically find the keyword that you're searching for like let's say you're writing a paper and we want to have a certain quote that has a certain keyword in it but you don't feel like reading the whole book just to find that 
Control Find comes in handy. It has saved me so much time. I, if you're not already using Control Find, you are wasting hours and hours of your time. So moving on to the next tip, which also ties into using Control Find or Command Find if you're on a MacBook like me, this ties into digital notes over physical notes. Now, I know a lot of people like to take physical notes. They say that it helps them retain information better and so forth. But I personally have always been a digital note type of gal because again, control find, you can automatically find what you need within that document. And for my people who are lazy and procrastinators like me, one thing that also is great about having digital notes, especially if they're saved in like a Google document, is that you can access that from your phones. And so when you wake up, you can still sit in bed and scroll through like the test review that you created. So now let's talk about some living situations for college laundry. So if you live in a dorm, right, of where it has a laundry room on the bottom floor, or perhaps laundry rooms throughout each floor, typically the best time to do your laundry is like early in the morning or late at night because if you try to do it in between that time frame it more than likely is going to be already full with other people in their laundry and you're just going to keep on waiting and waiting and waiting so make sure to keep that in mind and another thing i want to talk about is showering especially if you are someone who will have a dorm with a sweet bathroom or a community bathroom which is disgusting by the way i had a community bathroom during my freshman year people will leave hair and i even went live like a year ago on tiktok oh by the way follow me on there but someone commented saying that their friend went to a college with a community bathroom and people were just so nasty in there of where they actually stepped into a blood clot like a period menstrual cycle blood clot so with that being said make sure that you have shower shoes with you you do not want to step in anyone's blood feces whatever it may be because people are nasty people are not home trained like you are i'm assuming you're home trained um but yeah keep that in mind okay so also tying back into housing for context while i was in college my junior senior year i was an ra a resident assistant so if you are someone who is trying to figure out how to pay for college i highly recommend that you work in housing as an ra fa ha whatever because that fully paid for my housing my meal plan a monthly stipend and i even got like 400 dollars per semester to spend on campus restaurants like chick-fil-a and fuzzy's tacos and all the other places we have within our school but for those who are not interested in working in housing but want a different housing tip when you are signing up for your your new apartment or your new dorm whatever it may be make sure to ask if you can be put on the priority list for their newly renovated rooms so this is what i did when i was living at a pretty old dorm my sophomore year that basically looked like a motel and like the second and third floor i was hearing rumors that they had like mold and stuff and i was like oh no we ain't doing that so i made sure that i was on their priority list for the first floor of where they already had the rooms renovated and i ended up getting that room so make sure to keep that in mind and advocate for yourself that is one thing in everything in life you've got to advocate for yourself you can't just assume that you can't speak up and get certain opportunities you've got to put yourself out there so for the next student hack tip is student discount so there are several apps and websites that can help you save money in college such as these listed here student beans etc i highly recommend that you use them because you're already spending all this money at some of your favorite companies not knowing that they offer like 10 25 or even 50 percent off discounts just for students and also on that note of student discounts make sure that you continue to bring with you your student id and i even know some people who continue to benefit from student discounts even after graduating because they still have their student id is that legal eh. but anywho make sure to optimize all these benefits of how you can save money in college because college is already way too expensive so you need to save as much as possible so now let's talk about food in college you know how there's a common narrative that college students are always just eating ramen and all these unhealthy foods which is true it's very true but i want to share with you some food hacks so typically your university or your local city of where your school is based in will have a free food pantry that you can use and i highly recommend that you use it because they do have quality food that you're probably already eating yourself 
Like I would oftentimes use the food pantry my freshman and sophomore year and they had like the chips that I always eat, the Takis, the Funyuns, etc. They had soups that I always like to eat like chicken noodle, beef stew, whatever it may be. So make sure to use your local food pantry and also tying back into the whole student discount aspect of this video. If you're going out to eat, especially at local restaurants that are in like the college town of where your school is, they also tend to have student discounts. All you gotta do is ask, show your ID, etc. I'm honestly not even sure what number I am on with the tips in this video, but this will be the very last one. So let's talk about saving money when you are attending conferences, like professional conferences, which are perfect for networking, etc. So as a student, they typically have benefits of where you can actually travel to these conferences for free or at a reduced cost. So make sure to look for their student tickets as opposed to their professional or business tickets. Make sure to reach out to those over the conference and see if you can get like all expenses paid access to the conference. I've done this multiple times and had my airfare completely paid for. I had my food completely paid for and even the hotel completely paid for. So that's another tip there. And tying back into finances, saving money in college. Again, my platform is all about helping students graduate college debt-free by obtaining scholarships and other financial aid opportunities. So make sure to check out all the resources linked on my website. Consider enrolling in my online course or getting my book, whichever you prefer. And I also offer personalized services, which helps with editing um, essays, reviewing applications for scholarships, internships, whatever it may be. I do it all. And I hope that this video was helpful. Make sure to watch all the other videos in this playlist and have a wonderful day. Bye.